Hello, good morning. Today, Jesus Christ is angry. Yes, he's very, very angry. And he's angry with the people of his place, with Capernaum, with Bethsaida. And, you know, you, you want to ask, and with Chorazin, why is he angry? Why is Jesus angry? We are used to a Jesus who is meek and humble of heart, a Jesus who is nice and always wants to help us. Why is Jesus angry this morning? Personally, when people are angry, most times I just run away. I don't know what to do with anger. But that's the same for some of you too. But what is true is that when people are angry with us, sometimes it's important to take the time to check, why is she so angry? Why is he so angry? So let's look at why Jesus is angry this morning. Our gospel text is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 11, from verses 20, from verses 20 to 24. In this gospel text, what happens is that Jesus comes back to his place. He comes back to Capernaum, he comes back to Chorazin, he comes back to those places where he had done a lot of miracles. And he discovered that the people had not changed, that the people were not converted. So he's angry and he begins to say to them, what to you, because if the miracles done in your place were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, if they were done in Tyre and Sidon, those cities would have repented and they would not have been destroyed. So do you think that you're going to be elevated above all the regions, uh, you Capernaum? No, you're going to go down into the nether world and so on and so forth. So Jesus is really angry and he's giving it to them. So let's see three reasons why Jesus is angry with his people. The first is that they misunderstood that the, the, the significance of miracles. Child of God, a miracle is always a sign. A miracle is never a show or a spectacle. A miracle is always a sign pointing to something else. So for instance, when Jesus comes to heal the sick, he's showing us what we can do. He's showing us the need to convert and follow God. Now, if God saved you from dying the last time, what he simply wants is more gratitude in your life. He wants you to become a different person. Imagine this like a road sign. You are driving a car and then you come to a road sign that says, turn right. And then you keep driving straight into the wall. Of course, whoever owns the car, whoever is directing you will be angry with you. That's exactly what happens when we do not understand that first and foremost, Miracles are signs pointing to the need for a change of direction. So when Jesus does a miracle for you and I, he's expecting us to change the way we live, or at least to change something about the way we live. So when Jesus is angry this morning with his, with his people, it is because they hadn't recognized that the miracles he did were meant for their conversion. Now imagine this idea of uh, uh, posts of, of um, of signposts again, imagine you drop off your child in, in front of the school gate every day and in front of the school gate there's a big sign saying so and so secondary school and then every day you come back and pick up your child from the same spot and then at the end of the term your, your child fails and you're like why did you fail, why didn't you write the exams, why, what happened and he says um, there were no exams and you're like but there was an exam in the school and then you realize that every time you dropped your child in front of that signpost, he just stayed there until you came back in the afternoon to pick him up. He never went into the school. Of course, you'll be mad with your child. That's exactly what happens when we stay with miracles as spectacles, as shows, and not transform our lives by them. So that's why Jesus is angry this morning. The second reason why Jesus is angry this morning is that these people didn't realize their privilege. Child of God, it's always important to rem remember when you're in a privileged position to use it well. You know, they had Jesus with them. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have Jesus with them. The people of Tyre and Sidon didn't have Jesus with them. But these people had Jesus with them. He lived among them, and yet they did not recognize this privilege and change. So Jesus is angry whenever we abuse our privileges. Jesus is angry whenever we do not realize even that we are privileged people. I remember as a kid that and my dad told us a story of a man who always criticized a church wedding for coming late to the church. And he himself drove to the church in five minutes while this church wedding had to trek for one hour to get to the church. What the man didn't realize is that he is privileged, while the person he was criticizing didn't have the same privilege of being able to get to church in five minutes in an executive car. So child of God, the Lord wants us this morning to realize our privileges and put them to good use. And the last and the final thing I'd like to say about this text is that God is angry, Jesus is angry with us whenever we are complacent, whenever we are complacent, whenever we feel that, oh, we're invincible. That's what happened with Tyre and Sidon. They were great cities in the past, and they thought that, oh, nothing could happen to us. We are great cities, so why bother? The same thing was about to begin to happen with uh, Capernaum and Chorazin, the people of Jesus, and so he God gets angry with them because he says you must keep moving, you must change, you must change direction, you must do better. So whenever we become complacent, whenever we rest on our arms, 
God is not happy with us because he wants us to keep moving forward and keep becoming better persons. So child of God, this is why Jesus was angry this morning. So I hope we would learn, first and foremost, to use our privileges well, to understand that miracles are signs pointing to new directions and never to be complacent. I pray that the Almighty God will bless and keep you today. He who is Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.